so y'all know me I'm always moving around or at least I do my best filming when I'm moving around bear with me as I back out of my jungle of a backyard um so I ended my last little rant about PGS testing and um, embryo grades and egg quality grades and all of that. I ended that kind of abruptly because I'm running errands. But y'all know me. I'm not a professional at this whole video stuff. The big piece for me with the videoing and chronicling our journey is information and my personal experience. You see where I got my lunch all over my shirt during my break? <laughs> I'm a mess. Um, so, um, I'm not really going to try to string these videos together because I'm no good at it. I got a program that helps me do it, um, some kind of editing software that I don't know for the love of all that's holy how to use. I've tried in a couple different things earlier on on my channel to string shit together just doesn't feel right for me um so that being said I'm just going to jump into my next topic that I wanted to discuss um after the topic about PGS testing and the industry springing up to exploit us and our want of children my next topic is a lot more close to home a lot more personal for me and that is um the burgeoning consciousness of, of the disease endometriosis. Now, I've been seeing a lot of commercials and a lot of um, information circulating in the past year or so about endo. Um, I'm grateful for that. However, I'm just glad that you know medical science is starting to catch up to our needs as women because I'm 46 and at the ripe old age of 19 I was diagnosed through Planned Parenthood um, with endometriosis and that set me on a course of reproductive consciousness and awareness at an age that I wasn't prepared for and in a time in history that medical science had not caught up to the need. I was so fortunate to get a grant through Planned Parenthood. Now here's my plug for Planned Parenthood, at least the old Planned Parenthood. I'm very disheartened by their shift in mission now. But back in the day, Planned Parenthood saved my reproductive life. I am a mom of three amazing boys and my husband and I don't have children together, ergo our IVF journey. He has no children. So this is so important to me. I really wanted to have more children anyway, but I'm digressing. And so when I went to them at 19, having jacked up periods, inconsistent cycles, pain, bloating, stomach distension, every time I went to a doctor's office or a clinic, the first thing they want to do because you're in college is take a pregnancy test and throw you on birth control. They're not hearing you. They weren't listening to me. And there was something wrong. And I kept telling my regular OBGYN, a new OBGYN I went to, my regular doctor, even the clinic at the school. I'm like, listen, there's something wrong with me. And it's, oh no, you know, your cycles are repressed because you're athletic. Because I ran track and field and cross country and played basketball. Okay, that can only go so far. But when you get in one period a year, maybe two, and you doubled over in pain and you dying and your uterus is falling out, whatever, and sex was a non-issue for me. That just never happened. Sex was painful and bloody and it was horrible. So that was my birth control for several years. So at 19, going into 20 years old, I was home in Jersey and my sister, we were talking and she's like, why are you so bloated, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this is what's going on. And I told her what was going on with me and she was like girl we got to get you to Planned Parenthood well in my mind and the way the media had um maligned Planned Parenthood at the time it was the place where you go to have abortions and I'm like 
I'm not pregnant and I don't need to have an abortion. And why am I going to Planned Parenthood? And yada, yada, yada. And she was like, you know what? We're going to Planned Parenthood. There is something wrong with you. So we're going to find out what it is. So we go into Planned Parenthood and I'm like stressed, anxious, aggravated, mad, all of the emotions. And I just was prepared for someone else to tell me I just needed birth control and I was too athletic. But I get in there and for the first time in my life, my young 19 year old life, the nurse listened to me. She's like, what's going on? And I told her and I was like, and I'm not pregnant. You would have to have sex to have a pregnancy and I don't do that. So something's wrong. And she was like, okay, sweetie, I believe you. Let's just find out what's going on. And so she was the first person to not insult me as a woman and as a person and still sneak in a pregnancy test. She was like doing her exam and feeling around and she was like, there's something going on and you're right, you're not pregnant, but I need to get the ultrasound machine out. And she pulled the ultrasound machine out and I had never seen one of these things. And she scans my abdomen and my life changed at that moment. Everything that I had taken for granted at 19 years old, I'm not having kids till I'm in my thirties and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that changed in an instant when she said no you got some problems and she showed me growths the size of golf balls and and grapefruits or oranges and she was like it looks like you have endometriosis we got to get you treated and I was like I have no money I have no insurance and I don't know how to take care of this and I was terrified and she was like give me your backstory I told her I was in school blah 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 she's like we got a program for you and from that day through the birth of my eldest son, which was three years later, um, they granted and funded and, 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 and subsidized for me my reproductive medicines. So they found grant monies and, and, and monies to provide me to get my surgeries to have these cysts and, and growths and endo, extra endometrium tissues that were growing in ridiculous places removed. They paid for um, a year worth of an experimental medicine that put my pituitary gland to sleep called Cineral. And I could only be on it for nine months, but at the time that was fine because endometriosis being fed by female hormones your pituitary gland governs those hormones being released so they basically sent me into a chemically induced menopause um so with the absence of the estrogen hormones and all the stuff that makes our reproductive systems kick in it was it allowed the endometrius endometriosis tissues to to, to shrink to a, a manageable size, but I could only stay on it nine months because of how it was formulated and prescribed, but it was terribly expensive. It was $900 a prescription. And it was a nasal spray taken twice a day. Some months I needed one, some months I needed two, just based on how many days were in the month. Um, and it wasn't covered by anybody's insurance. My grandmother looked into it. My mom and stepdad said they looked into it, but I believe that it just wasn't gonna be covered. And Planned Parenthood found the money and they paid for my whole nine months with my pharmacy in advance through my grant. They paid for my surgery in advance through my grant. They paid for my post-op and pre-op medicines through the grant and then after the nine months, they covered all my doctor's visits uh, with a specialist. After the nine months on the medication, they paid for the following year of, of my birth control because once we got the endometrious tissue, endometrium tissue to, to, to shrink to manageable size, they had to keep it that way. So they had to regulate my hormones. And we all know about that with this journey. The hormones are the, are the thing. And so that was a three-year process and they told me somewhere during that time frame from the beginning to my oldest son that you know pretty much this is going to start growing again and based on how aggressive it is you know you may not ever be able to have children and so my circumstance was such that after year number two my doctor came to me and she said you know you're decreasing your chances of having children 
15, 25% every year that you don't have children with the way your endometriosis is growing. And so we can't guarantee you'll ever have children because these 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 tissues are gonna outgrow the embryo at certain stages. And we had these day on day on day on conversations at length and her drilling the importance of my reproductive health to me into my 19, 20 year old head. Um, until it stuck and I understood it. Planned Parenthood paid for my support groups and they paid for my psychological therapies. They paid for one round of old school, old school IVF, but it wasn't even IVF as we know it and it just didn't work. So I could get the egg to, 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 to fertilize, I just couldn't get it to stick. So that was, that, was, that was painful and it was a process and it was scary and I had lost hope and Planned Parenthood always said, you know, don't lose hope. There's always hope. And if you can get pregnant and stay pregnant through at least the first into the second trimester based on what your medical reality is, then the pregnancy hormone will eradicate, do away with your issues with endometriosis. It will kill the endometriosis tissue and balance you back out and you won't have any issue. But it's just getting you pregnant and staying pregnant long enough for those hormones to affect your system. That was a lot to take in because it's a lot to fucking recap on a video, but I'm abridging everything. I'm abridging three years worth of stuff into a few minutes. And so, um... That was, the, that was the goal, was to eventually get me pregnant. Now, I was in college, and I had to finish, and there were so many other realities, and I had a conversation with my grandmother, always had conversations with her. She was my ultimate cheerleader. El ultimate. <laughs> and when I talked to her about it, I was like, you know, I want to do this with my life and do that with my life, and maybe kids are in my future. She looked at me, and she was like, babe, she was like, don't say that. Because my grandmother only had one child because she had reproductive issues that modern science at her time couldn't regulate and manage. Plus, she was black from the South, and we are not ever a priority in anybody's medical sect, okay? But that's another story. And so she was like, any woman that gets one period in her life owes it to herself if she wants children to have children. Don't deprive yourself because I don't want you looking back when you're 60, 65, 70 years old regretting not having children and she gave me some examples of some aunts in my family who could not have children they were barren these are great aunts and she was like they are miserable and I lived with these women and around these women and they were absolutely right they took pleasure in their nieces and nephews but it wasn't the same as having your own children and in your later days and golden years in life having those children be there for you in your old age so my grandmother was not hearing me not having any children. She's like, you know what? If you got to have a baby before you finish school, if you got to have a baby before you're ready, we're going to help you. Me and your grandfather are here for you, but I don't want you missing your chance to at least have one child. Well, that didn't really set well with my party girl lifestyle. You know, I was traveling and doing the most. And my, 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 my aunt Thelma, God rest her soul, said to me, she said, sweetheart, babies don't stop a parade they may detour it they may slow it down but they don't stop a parade <laughs> hang on a sec hi there you like my car thank you so much <laughs> yeah i got falcon out today the sports car so everywhere i go <laughs> some man is stopping saying how much they like my car but that's okay anyway I digress so my aunt Thelma was like you know babies don't stop a parade they may detour it they may slow it down but if your goal is to get to the end of that parade processional then you're gonna get to the end of that parade processional don't use a child as your excuse for not thriving and accomplishing what you want to thrive and accomplish so with Thelma on one hand and Johnny May, on the other hand, I embarked on the most grown-up, life-transforming decision I ever embarked on, and that was trying to have a baby. And with endometriosis, and in school, and on medicine, and not knowing what the fuck I was doing, and um, 
my grandmother and I sat up many a days in her bed with my black book. We ain't gonna talk about the black book. This is before the days of cell phones, y'all. We had sky pages and beepers and shit. So I had a black book, you know, with the grading scale in it. But that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother story. And so we sat up many a days making phone calls, you know, presenting legal and financial options to the men that we narrowed down as possible genetic uh, donors, genetic compatible men. Um, my grandmother was big on aesthetic. I get that. And so um, we went through the list, went through the list, and it was arduous. So um, we finally got it narrowed down, and the rest is history because my oldest son was born. And it was harrowing, actually, um, the first five months or so of my pregnancy, as it is with any pregnancy, but with the endometriosis, they had to keep close eye on the growth of, you know, the, the, the tumors or whatever, the nodules, whatever you're calling them. They had to keep an eye on, um, on, on, on my hormone levels. They had to keep an eye on his development. And I had some pretty good size ones and where they were placed versus where he was implanted was a was a was a concern and it was a constant balancing act and i was still bleeding and i was still going through stuff and planned parenthood never let me fall planned parenthood had my back and i will always hold in my heart an affinity for planned parenthood and its uh, uh, and it's and it's and it's mission during the time in which they serviced me. So I don't know what that window of time was for Planned Parenthood. Um, I don't know what years to what years. I know my eldest son was born in '94, and my treatment and grant with them ended in '95. So from what period to '95? I don't know when their mission changed or shifted. And I've read the history and I've listened to the stuff in the reports and yada yada with Planned Parenthood and much like any other entity it evolved from one thing to the next and is evolving into some other shit and that's not my bag to carry I'm just grateful that thanks to Planned Parenthood I got the medical treatment for my endometriosis and the information and the 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 follow-up and the mental health care that I needed to be a whole well-rounded functional adult woman capable of, of having children. And they were right. Subsequent of having my oldest son, once I got past the four or five month threshold out of the danger zone, and he grew exponentially after that, 10 pounds, 13 ounces, 22 inches long. We talking, I gave birth to a toddler. And um, so <laughs> once he was here, I didn't have any other issues with my endo. Not at all. Like, I was on eggshells after he was born, after my postpartum was over. I was on eggshells for, like, a year after that. Like, oh, uh, shit, uh, what's going to happen? My son, because of the length of time I labor, his size, his length, ended up having a C-section, all the chaos that came with that, he was my birth control for, like, three years. Psh, not happy. Psh, I'm good. One and done. That was my shit right there. But... I was on eggshells for like a year, maybe two, after he was born. Just like, when am I going to start feeling this pain again? When am I going to start having these symptoms again? Um, let me go back to Planned Parenthood and follow up with and, and find out if, if everything is, is, is on track. And needless to say, I went back to Planned Parenthood and both of my doctors and specialists when Ori was um, about a year or two old and did the test and the and the and the, and, the, and the scans and the whatever they do to poke and prod you and they were like you are a classic case you are good you are so good like we don't see any endometriosis it had not spread to my other organs and they said we don't see any reason why you will not go on to have a healthy viable reproductive life if you want further children fast forward five years had two kids back to back, didn't have no problems. Once I got started, it was like Pez dispensers or some shit. <laughs> At least I didn't have any problems getting pregnant with my other two. Um, so now that I'm in this later stage in my life, this more mature 
appreciative stage in my life. Um, I'm looking so forward to this process when we do our FET um, in a few weeks. And I am so grateful for the information and the, the advancement in science and medicine for other women who may have suffered in silence with endometriosis and other women who now have better options than I had and who may not have been as fortunate to have a Planned Parenthood program to subsidize their care or who may be suffering with endometriosis on a different scale in a different way that is rendering them, you know, infertile or, or they're being told that they're infertile. And if anyone wants more detail about the level of treatment I got and what I had to do to change my life in conjunction with the medications, um, please, 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 you know, make a comment down there, send me a message, I'll get back to you. Um, because this is important. If it were not for the treatment I received, I would not have the three blessings I have with my three eldest sons. And I would not be able to embark on this second phase of my reproductive life with my husband um, if I had not had the care and the treatment that I got. So, I'm just wanting to just put that out there. I'm glad endometriosis has finally made it into the mainstream consciousness of medical science and that they have addressed and are addressing those of us that suffer with it and our needs. I'm so grateful for that. And so with that, I'm going to end this video right now. And I'm probably going to come back one more time because y'all know how I do. I'll hang up and say, love you, love me. And then next thing you know, some more shit comes to mind and I jump back on again. And then I'll go three weeks and don't video at all. So you know how I do. <laughs> um, take good care of you. Hydrate, nurture yourself, be kind to yourself, forgive yourself, and have faith in yourself. We can do this together independently. We can do this. I'm just glad that there are a few people on the journey with me and that I can be on the journey with them and that I have an audience for, you know, conveying what's in this helter skelter head of mine. All right. Well, be good to yourselves. Love you. Love me. I'm finna go and cheat and get a Pepsi cause yes, water is great and hydrate, but I need a Pepsi. I need a Pepsi. Oh God, I need a Pepsi. So love you. Bye. <laughs>